Do you have trouble getting your fourth finger to reach the note it's supposed to play? Do you just generally play out of tune? When you play an open string drone, do your fingers leak onto the open string or do you have clean drones? I'm Ruth Rowland, the fiddle geek, talking about fiddle hand E. There are many ways to hold a fiddle and if you're happy with the way you're doing it now, with the way you're playing now, then there's no need to change. But if you're looking to level up, I have some tips for you. The first is to balance on the violin between this bump and this bone. Something like this. Yeah? And you can do this exercise whenever you're around a highlighter, if you stand around in an office, or if your grandkids are coloring with those chunky markers, you can join in and maybe practice a little violin hand hold. And this is helpful for a number of reasons. If we leave a window when we're holding the violin, our fingers aren't all crowded up. They're better able to adjust if they land out of tune and they move more quickly. <laughs> Which brings me to my next tip. Tall fingers. So we want the knuckles, the base knuckles of our hand to be over the fingerboard, even the pinky knuckle. You can see my pinky knuckle is much lower than my other knuckles, but it's especially important for the pinky to not have to come up from underground in order to play. All of the fingers benefit from this. Longer fingers, right? They can reach farther and taller fingers don't leak onto your drones. While we're talking about longer fingers, fourth fingers are really trouble. If you want to reach a spot here, you feel like you're never going to make it unless you let go of your first finger. But actually, whenever we reach with any of our fingers, the tip, the fingertip leads which means the finger is going to straighten out. And when it straightens out, you can see it's farther away from the fingerboard than we started. If we were here and then we wanna reach, well, <laughs> that's counterproductive. So my solution is to hold the fiddle by the neck, put it up on your shoulder, and then voila, you can go as far as you need to. That's a whole step farther than I really need for uh, in order to play the D in tune. Okay, even on the G string, the G string is farthest away. That's why I chose that one. In order to get all of my knuckles above the fingerboard, you can see my elbow needs to turn in toward my body. So here's not ideal, here's ideal. And you notice my thumb, right, is going into that position where the bone is holding up the violin neck. When we're resting the violin on this bone, we can't have our thumb tight. It's impossible. All of the tight positions involve the pad of the thumb on the violin neck. The reason why we don't want a tight thumb is because a tight thumb will slow our fingers down, right, because the whole hand is connected. The tight thumb slows our fingers, makes them uh, stiffer and less able to adjust their intonation, right? So a loose thumb is very important. This is your garden variety noise putty. You know, that stuff that uh, sounds like bodily functions when you, yeah, you know what I mean. You dip your finger in. If you're having trouble getting a good tone with your left hand, you know you know that the open strings sound fine, but as soon as you put your fingers down, it sounds funny. Play with some noise putty and see, see if that helps. Get that idea of pushing through the putty all the way to the bottom of the container. And for extra credit, you can balance the putty on the heel of your hand and dip into that. Dip your fingers in, All right? And just play around with that a little bit. Then when you do the next exercise, you can still have that feeling of pushing through putty even though you're actually bouncing on a, a metal string. 
So before we start, we want to make sure we're going to hold the violin just like we were holding the highlighter. We're going to make sure our knuckles are above the fingerboard. We can wave at our thumb <laughs> if we want to. And then we're going to make sure, we're also going to make sure we have a really good hold, right? Um, that when, when we hold the violin with the head, we don't have to raise our shoulder at all, right? We can, we can take our violin away and your shoulder's still in the same position or about the same position, right? If you have trouble with that last bit, holding the violin with your head, go ahead and hold, take your, take your hand with the thumb on top and just hold the shoulder right across from the chin rest. And eventually, hopefully you'll get a shoulder rest that you like or some other setup. I put my four fingers on the string and bounce down into the string, sink down into the string like I was sinking down into the putty. Then when I come up, I don't want to leave the string. I'm not jumping off the string. Just going to be bouncing. And then we can sing four bottles of beer on the wall, four bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, two bottles of beer on the wall, two bottles of beer on the wall, two bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, one bottle of beer on the wall, one bottle of beer on the wall, one bottle of beer. That's a fun song to sing with the game if you don't like beer, you can substitute your favorite beverage. Four bottles of kombucha on the wall. Or you can just say bounce, bounce, bounce. Tap, tap, tap. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Singing just makes it more fun. You could even do like the children I teach and say four little monkeys bouncing on the bed and then the thumb is the doctor. Totally up to you. Just do some combination of finger bounces and thumb taps. And when you bounce, bounce down from these knuckles that we just exercised when we were waving. For bow hand tips, follow the link below. It'll take you to the Fiddle Geek channel. See you there. Bye.